Hi, it's The Wire. It's Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. I hope you're having a spectacular summer. The boxing has been spectacular, but sometimes it's hard to find the great fights. Let's talk about a great fight between in my opinion, the fighter who gave Terence Crawford the hardest fight of his career, Aegeus Cavaliakis, right? We'll call him Mean Machine. And the best prospect, in my opinion, in boxing, Virgil Ortiz. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now we all have our favorites, right? We all have a different list of who's the best in the sport pound for pound. I understand many of you believe that it's Canelo. I understand many of you believe that it's Errol Spence, right? There's certain fighters out there who we gravitate to. No question about it. But what I want people to do is to look at Terrence Crawford. Now understand, Crawford is different than the other fighters because Crawford has been undisputed. Right? So now Crawford is in a different division one in which he's fought world-class fighters. In fact, he's fought some former title holders. Amir Khan, Kel Brook, right? And Crawford has looked dominant. Understand how Crawford came to the attention of promoters. A guy he fought in the amateurs, future Hall of Famer Mikey Garcia was talking to his promoter and brought up Crawford's name. Now, I know Crawford had a rough time of it early against Yorkie Scamboa, right? That's one of the reasons, by the way, I think Manny Pacquiao, in addition to giving Errol Spence a hard time, is gonna give Crawford a hard time if the guys ever meet in the ring, right? But understand, the hardest fight of Crawford's career, in my opinion, was his fight against Lithuanian, the Mean Machine. Understand, Mean Machine has only lost once. It was that fight to Terence Crawford where he knocks Crawford down. Don't believe the official story. The referee ruled it a slip. Folks, it was a slip because Crawford got hit and lost his balance. The knockdown is even more dramatic because there's a pause. Crawford gets hit with a shot. You see Crawford then realize that he's hurt. At least Crawford's body did. And Crawford ends up on the canvas. Right? And so what I want people to do is to revisit that Terrence Crawford mean machine fight. Mean Machine is underrated. Mean Machine is 33, he's older. But understand, this is a guy who hits as hard as anybody in the division. He's two-handed. He's a sudden mid-range hooker. Very heavy puncher. More importantly, perhaps most importantly, he has rhythm. When the pocket gets too hot, he can move away on his back foot. He has the timing. Now he doesn't have the offense when he's backing away. Few do, right? But understand, this is a cagey guy who you have to deal with him at mid-range. But yet he's savvy enough to know how to defend himself and how to back away when he's outgunned, which is rarely. Now Crawford comes out and tries to fight him left-handed and ends up eating several right hooks. 
Folks, make no mistake, Crawford is getting tested. Now, the secret sauce to Crawford is his ability to make adjustments. Right? Crawford starts slow in most fights. There are some early Crawford KOs. But in most fights, Crawford fights slow. He watches you. He makes adjustments. Most guys who fight Crawford do it the wrong way. They come out, they think to themselves, oh, I'm fighting Terrence Crawford. Then they're tentative. No, the time when Crawford is vulnerable is early in a fight. You have to jump on him. Right? You have to be like, we'll pull out an old fight, Lennox Lewis was against Andrew Galata. Because Crawford is like the New England Patriots, just like Tom Brady with the Patriots never got a touchdown in the first quarter. Terrence Crawford's a guy who starts slow, makes the adjustments, then comes on later in the fight. Now against Mean Machine, he's getting cuffed around. Crawford could not maintain his left-handed stance and boxing game plan against Mean Machine. So Crawford then, after getting knocked down, makes the adjustment and figures out that he needs to lead with power shots. He can't be mid-range. He needs to be long-range and then short-range. He needs to jump in the pocket. He has to go for the KO. Boxing this guy was too dangerous. Well, it worked. He gets the KO in something like the ninth round against Mean Machine. Until then, it's a spirited fight. Biggest test Crawford has had in the ring. Right now, it's true. Mean Machine was fighting eighth round, eight round fights almost up until the time he fights Crawford. You know, I don't really care where a guy's been. I care where the guy is right now. It's clear to me, looking at this guy, that he's one of the best at 147. One of the very best. And that his management was too cautious. Right, this guy's a live underdog regardless of who he faces. Crawford was fortunate to figure stuff out. He almost didn't get the opportunity. Had Mean Machine just landed a little bit more cleanly on the shot that dropped Crawford, Crawford might not have gotten off the canvas. Now let's talk about Virgil Ortiz the guy who I consider to be the best prospect in the sport, and he's underrated. Folks, look at the amateur fight he had against Ryan Garcia. He beats Ryan Garcia. The judges don't give it to him. Right? Ortiz is widely viewed as having one of the best punches in the sport, and he does. He hits harder than Terrence Crawford. But what I want people to consider is the fact that Ortiz also has one of the best jabs in the sport. I don't mean for a young person, and Ortiz is 23. No, I mean for anybody. Right? You look at King Arthur, great jab. Right? You look at Tyson Fury, great jab. Fury is a mobile jab. We need to prioritize mobile jabs. Right? You look at Okole at Cruiserweight. Great jab. Like Okole, Virgil Ortiz has the kind of jab. Like Jamel Charlo. Castano takes it away from him. But like Jamel Charlo, who drops Jason Rosario on a power jab, Ortiz can knock you out with his jab. Folks, it's that hard. This fight raises several questions, right? Because since Ortiz has never made it past the seventh round, hasn't had to, 
since Ortiz has a 100% KO ratio, since Ortiz is only 23 years old, there's a big question on whether Ortiz has the patience against a hard-handed, two-handed, mid-range hooker to win the fight on his jab. Does he have the confidence to let the fight unfold from behind his jab? To just go where his jab takes him? The fight's in Texas. It's in Ortiz's backyard. Is Ortiz going to get caught up in the moment? It's the biggest fight of his career. And end up in a shootout against a guy who knocked down Terrence Crawford. Against a vet who's in his 30s. Who is very much in that Crawford fight. A full six rounds into that 12 rounder. Right, folks? This fight's riveting. I don't believe it goes the distance, in part because Ortiz hasn't had to go past the seventh round, in part because Mean Machine is underrated and hits like Errol Spence. I haven't seen the odds on this fight because it's too recent. Casinos, for some reason, haven't posted it. They're too busy posting the odds for Joe Joyce versus Carlos Tackle. Okay, fine. I get it. The way I'm playing it, just to maximize my rate of return on a fight that I don't think goes a distance, that's highly competitive, is I'm going to take the underdog, and I assume that's Mean Machine. I'm going to take the underdog to win the fight, hedged with the favorite by stoppage. Make no mistake, that's how I'm playing it, but... I privately don't expect the fight to go the distance, right? Ortiz is going to have to show more footwork than he's shown in the past to do what Terrence Crawford did, right? Crawford, after getting shelled, trying to box left-handed, abandons that, then starts jumping around, then starts jumping in with power shots. Right? The question for me, given the fact that Ortiz has one of boxing's best jabs, and there are questions about his stamina since he hasn't had to fight the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th rounds before, is whether Ortiz can pace himself while winning rounds by using his jab as a bludgeon to bludgeon his opponent without having to jump around and be a daredevil like Terence Crawford ultimately had to be to beat Mean Machine. Folks, if you're looking for a highly competitive fight between two guys who have the capability to grab a hold of a title at 147, to fight the best in the division. And let's face it, 147 has gotten older. Tell me who's under 30. Crawford. Pacquiao. Spence. The answer's no one. Right? There's a new guard that's been kept outside the temple that hasn't yet had the opportunity. Ortiz. Jaron Ennis. Right? Boxing's a young man's game. Eventually, the old guard is going to move away. Danny Garcia already. According to reports, is moving to 154 pounds. Right? Understand, we've been watching the same age group in a young man's division where there are great fighters in their 20s. I believe boxing's best prospect is Virgil Ortiz. This is his big moment of truth. If you ask me who's the most underrated guy in his 30s at 147, 
right? I would say it's Mean Machine. Right? So this is a must-watch fight. If you're a casual fan, this is a fight to research. You want to pay particularly close attention to Virgil Ortiz. I get the feeling that this guy is going to be a star wherever he lands. If he decides he's a little bit big for 147, if he moves up to 154, I believe he's a serious threat to both Charlo and Castano, who, of course, are both in their 30s. Right? I believe it's just a matter of time before Ortiz ends up in the ring with Eric Sidlubin, who I think is going to be the future at 154 pounds. Right? So this is a must-watch fight. Don't sleep on Green Machine. He's a ringer. In other words, you look at his resume, you see eight-round fights, you say, wow, this guy really hasn't fought a lot of great competition. Then you see him against Terrence Crawford, and folks, he did better against Crawford than Amir Khan did, than Cal Brook did, right? Quite frankly, I'm not sure if those guys can beat him, right? This fight's either gonna make his career, shine the spotlight on him, or it's gonna validate what we think we know about Virgil Ortiz. That he's one of the best, and that talent-wise, quite frankly, he belongs on boxing's pound-for-pound -pound list. This is a must-watch. Boxing is having a spectacular summer. Right, Josh Taylor? The Charlo Castano bout, and now this. I think it's a must-watch. I'm taking the underdog to win the fight, hedged with the favorite by KO. Why? Because I don't think this fight goes the distance. I believe this fight has two of the better punchers in the sport. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.